back. So let's install the IDE and think of the IDE as our text editor on steroids, right? So it's a place for us to write our code that can actually help us complete the code, figure out errors in the code, compiling the code, stuff like that. It has so much help compared to a text editor and that's kind of what an integrated development environment is supposed to do for us. And we're going to use WebStorm. That's uh, It should be one of the best ones for writing JavaScript. There are a lot of others out there like Visual Studio Code. We could have used that. We could have used IntelliJ. We could have used their Visual Studio. We, there's so many we could actually have used, but I'm going to use WebStorm because it has an integrated terminal that I love. Uh, that's one thing. There's a lot of other reasons for using this. Now, how do we actually install this? Where well, it's very simple. Um, you just press download right here, and you get a file, a DMG file like this, and that's on the Mac, of course. When I double click this guy, I get to something looking like this, where I can just drag it into my folder. That was how you have to install it on the Mac. Now, I also prepared this for installing it on the Windows. Again, you pop up with a page like this. It says, um, yes, you've downloaded it and you get an exit file. Now, by the way, I'll add the link here for the download page so you don't have to go and write it in manually uh, inside the description. Just go and grab it there. When you have the exit file, you'll open it on the Windows machine. That's just where I'm going to try and install it also here. You're going to get to a setup here. It's just a basic installation guide that you always have on Windows. Press next. You can select that you also want these associations to be automatically set up for Windows when you're using WebStorm. So whenever you press a JavaScript file, it'll open WebStorm, right? And you can go in and just select the folder there to install your setup file. And there we go. Now it's going to install WebStorm on Windows. Now, while this is running, let me just talk a bit about the pricing because this is not free. WebStorm actually costs something. The only tool out there that's purely free for development is Visual Studio Code. Now you can go and use that instead if you want to but I'm, I'm a fan of WebStorm. If you're a student at our academy, um, and if you're a student in general, you can actually get this and a lot of other tools for free on jetbrains.com. I'll also add a link for this, but you can go and apply as, an, as a student on jetbrains.com. So go and do that if you want to use this tool, then you have it for free while you're studying, right? You can apply now right here. And by the way, you're also getting IntelliJ if you want to use that. You're getting ReSharp if you're a C Sharp coder in Visual Studio. You're getting uh, WebStorm, PHP if you're a PHP writer. You can get PHP Storm for free. You have Writer for free. That's also a great IDE. There's so many cool tools on JetBrains right here. Now to do it, you go and apply now. You press apply and then it will power with a page like this. You select I'm a student. You put in first name, last name. You can also be a teacher, by the way. An email address and what country you're from. And then you read the the JetBrain policy and you say apply for new products and then you'll get an email and in there you'll actually get a way for you to set up your license and we'll try and do that in a second and um, when this installation is actually done. Now when the installation is actually done you'll click run WebStorm and you'll say finish and WebStorm should pop up with something like this and this is the same when the first time you started up on the Windows or the Mac it doesn't matter that's the same thing that happens right now so let's see if this actually pops up right here. There we go, you get something like this. I'm not going to import the setting. This is only because I had it before, but you should see something like this where it tries to launch it. You might not have a license right here because I already have mine set up. And I'll try and show you that in a second how you set that up. This is something you should see now. You should see WebStorm initial configuration. Just keep the IntelliJ set up. Now there is a way for you to work. If you're used to Visual Studio or Eclipse, you can kind of pick their shortcut setup, right? But I'm just going to keep the IntelliJ set up because that's what I'm used to. And then we have this, the first project. And we can start working with this in the next lesson to actually start running with our new project right here. Um, you, have, you can go in and you can manage license right here. And here you should go in and set JetBrains account and then put in your email right here so that you should be up and running and of course your password. And then you can activate it and you should be up and running. That's all you have to do. So see you in the next lesson where we will actually start running with our WebStorm setup. Have fun.